1977, a small factory in Colvin Leicester got to work on something that would change the lives of countless people. Little did they realise that people were still care enough 40 years later to sit and listen to a guy waffle on about that product. This is the Star Wars Toy Podcast. Hello there, and welcome to this week's Star Wars Toy Podcast. Uh, this week uh, on the podcast, I'm going to do something a bit different. I usually uh, waffle on about Star Wars toys, but I thought as a change, I'm going to get different people on, uh, get a few collectors. And this week, it's John Adams from the Super Awesome Geek Show. Hello, John. Hey, how you doing, Mark? I'm uh, fantastic. What time is it there? Just about 3 p.m. in the afternoon. Yeah, it's- yeah, it's just about eight o'clock here. So, John, tell me all about yourself. Well, I uh, I call myself the Vintage Geek because I love vintage toys, especially vintage Star Wars action figures, you know. And uh, about four or five years ago, I started a podcast called the Super Awesome Geek Show with my friend Jason. Him and I kind of started it together. And uh, and then I kind of recently have been really trying to push the YouTube because we got a pretty good following on the podcast. But I think, you know, collecting toys is a visual medium. So I wanted to start showing them off on uh, YouTube. So I'm trying to get that going, too, now. It's similar to what I'm doing at the moment. How did you start collecting? Oh, I've been collecting since I was a kid. I mean, I took a break when I I mean... Like my fondest memories as a kid are getting Star Wars figures, and uh, yeah. you know I, I I still have a photograph of myself and my grandmother. I was probably like five years old, and she gave me a Han Solo that I think it was 1979 Christmas, and uh, they gave me the whole everything that was out that year. They gave me like each each relative gave me one figure. So by the end of Christmas, we had all twelve or whatever it was that year, right? Twelve. <laughs> yeah and i i still have that photo and i treasure it <laughs> oh wow uh, the thing is about uh, when, when i'm doing these interviews and podcasts i um i know something about the about the person i've i've researched the the, the person but it's quite difficult with with yourself with uh, other youtubers and uh, podcasters because there's there's nothing on Google about it so i can't i can't i can't research unfortunately so <laughs> it's not, it's not a very professional yeah. interview because, um, well, I wouldn't. I don't want to call it an interview, really. I, I just wanted to call it like a chat, a vintage, vintage it, toy chat. Yeah, just. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. Have a chat. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but I mean, I think like most people, I took a break when I got my car when I was around sixteen or so, and. Uh, yeah, I think everybody did. Didn't yeah, they? I was partying, hanging out with girls, doing all kinds of stuff, <laughs> you know. But I got to say, yep. when I turned, I mean, I don't really 100% remember the year. It was somewhere 18, 19, 20, somewhere in that range. My, yep. I had always wanted the AT-AT. I call it an AT-AT. Yes, it's not an AT-AT. Yeah, AT. It's an AT-AT. Of course it's an AT-AT. Yeah, of course it is. <laughs> and, uh, but like, I always wanted like, that kind like of... Like Zuckus and Fallum, and Zuckus and Fallum, they're not, they're not the other way around. Yeah. I, I wanted that toy, the Kenner toy, you know? When I was yeah. a kid, my father found one at over here. We have KB. We had KB toys. Did, did you guys have KB toys? No, we don't. I've, I have heard okay. of them uh, through through the junk man and other people. Yeah, they're cl- they're uh, closed up yeah. now. They don't they don't exist anymore. But yeah, yeah. But he walked into a KB. I guess he was in the mall or doing something, and he saw that for five dollars on clearance. Wow. So he bought it, and when I came home <laughs> that day. It was sitting on the kitchen table wrapped up and it said, I know you oh. always wanted one of these. Wow. And he bought it as a gag gift. He thought it was a joke. It wasn't my real <laughs> Christmas gift or it wasn't my real birthday gift that year. Yeah. And uh, but I don't remember what I got for my birthday for real. I just remember the ad at, you know. <laughs> and uh, oh, so wow. that got me back into it. I went into the closet, found all my old action figures and everything. And started putting them up in my room on display. And my friend, my friend uh, Nofrio, an Italian guy that I know, he, him, and I started a uh, small collecting club. And we'd we'd go to like 
the antique um, and toy shows and things. And we actually started doing our own booth and selling stuff. Uh, so we sell different things really so we on. could buy the toys that we really wanted, you know, and uh, yeah. getting into the whole trading thing and getting into the, we went really deep into, you know, becoming toy gurus in a sense, you know. <laughs> so do you have a, do you have a focus? What do you actually collect? Um, it's mainly Star Wars and Transformers, I would say. Right. But I don't, it's, it's, I'm not a completist. I get what I like. If it looks really good, looks really cool. If it brings back a memory of my childhood, I'll grab it. Yeah. Oh, but definitely. I can't afford to get everything. You know what I mean? So nah. no. I'm kind of a pick and choose collector. It's not a lot of us that can. <laughs> yeah. And I love, I love the old cartoon. So I have a sprinkling of everything like mass, GI Joe, Thundercats. All right. The Centurions, you know, I even have a bionic man, you know, Flash Gordon. Oh, I've got Battlestar that. Galactica, you know, oh, wow. Legions of Power, Air Raiders. So I've got <laughs> I've gotten I've got a sampling of everything that I grew up with. But nothing is a complete collection, because like I said, I, I really can't afford to go all yeah, in, yeah. you know, but. So there's no there's no yeah. focus. Sawas focus is. You don't collect just one figure. You collect just, just what you like. Well, okay, yeah, yeah. All right, you're gonna. I'm. I should say I do have a Yoda right. obsession. I have, I have an entire two cabinets, glass cabinets, that are just full of Yoda stuff. Anything with Yoda on it. I got cookie jars. I got shampoo. I got band aids. <laughs> I got tissue paper. <laughs> so yes, Yoda. Yoda's oh. the focus. There my, you go. My ex-wife, she loved Yoda, and uh, when we split up, she took all the Yoda stuff. So <laughs> that's a bit, bit of a sore point. I had the <laughs> um, the Palatoy hand puppet. You know, I, I I think I have the Kenner version. The Kenner version, version yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. She's uh, yeah. she'll she'll have that somewhere. It's still still in the box and everything. So uh, I'm not happy about that. <laughs> but I've just got a card of the uh, Empire Strikes Back Yoda this week so yeah that was i got one a couple of years back with some christmas money that yeah. was every year every year i get money for christmas so i get myself one or two vintage yeah. carded figures yeah that's the best and, way uh, yeah that's the best way but i think i think my yoda puppet the one you're talking about about 20 years ago i was with a girl and i went over to her sister's house and in the refrigerator was the yoda puppet and i asked why it was in the fridge and it was because her sister's daughter was scared of the Yoda and they didn't know where to hide it. So they hid it in the, so I said, well, I'll gladly take the Yoda off your hands and then you don't have to hide right. it. <laughs> oh, wow. So that's how I got it. <laughs> so I've got a lot of uh, question for you now. It's, uh, yeah. why do we collect? Why do you think we collect? You know, for me, I th I think it's the nostalgia of when I was a child. The, you know, I yeah, just exactly that's, that's it goes it think. goes yeah, it just goes back to a a different time in your life. You know, when I guess things were simpler. <laughs> they certainly were, certainly were. So have you have you got a uh, display room? Yeah, how did it yes, display yeah. your uh, collection? I mean, I've, yep. I've seen on the on your YouTube channel, you've got cabinets and things like that. Yeah, um, about half of them are behind glass, and then I yeah. got just shelves with other stuff on them. Yeah. You know, yeah. I I want more space though. I need more. <laughs> That's the only thing. In say we need more space. It's yeah. terrible. I mean, I I just have there's one room. I'm in a small condo, and there's one room that I can use for the toys, and I also use it to record everything and do my videos and stuff. And right, so it's 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 really small and cramped and everything is like so packed in there that you can't really focus you have to really no. you have to really look when you're in here and spend your time <laughs> on each shelf because <laughs> it's so packed in there sometimes yeah i was in the basement when i was when i was uh, living with my ex-wife so i was recording out in the basement and everything was down in the basement but now i've got my own place it's just all spread out 
I'm quite enjoying being single, to be honest with you. I can collect <laughs> what I want without anybody moaning at me. <laughs> um, do you collect any modern items? Like yeah, I, you know, I love the Black Series, that Star yeah. Wars Black Series. I love that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I've been recently getting a lot of the Marvel 6-inch because right. they, they've been bringing back a lot of the classic look from the old cartoon, the 90s cartoon, yeah. and the uh, old comics that I grew up with. So a lot of the X-Men figures and the Avenger and Spider-Man figures look like the comic book models or the stuff you saw in the old 90s cartoons. Yeah. Is that so, Hasbro? The Hasbro one? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've been I, looking at those. I just got that Juggernaut with Colossus set, and oh, oh my wow. gosh, I can't believe how good that Juggernaut <laughs> came out, yeah. man. Oh, wow. Yeah, because I've been looking at the, um, uh, the Builder figures for Thanos. Yeah, and um, what you need to collect for that. Uh, yeah, I've been uh, thinking about that. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you think about uh, reproductions? You know, it's kind of an interesting topic. I know a lot of people have been talking about that online. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm okay with it as long as it's clearly marked as a repro. You know, mm. like I. I almost think there should be like a collector's standard that that these there's an R like a stamp of an R or something put on every figure that's a repro. It can look exactly the same, just have a little mark yeah. that shows it's a repro, you know? Cuz I kind of think of it like the collector's car market. Like if you go buy an old 60s Mustang or something, you're probably not going to be able to find all the parts. Exactly. You know, in today's that market. Thing... So you're oh. going to have to get some repro parts to make that car complete. And have it drive around and make yeah. it look nice to bring to shows and stuff. So, but yet those parts are clearly marked as repro. Everyone knows when they look at it that it's a repro part, yeah. you know. So I kind of feel like the toy industry should be the same way. I don't think it's the toy industry. I think it's just Star Wars. To be honest with you, <laughs> I think it's just a vintage Star Wars. Yeah. I mean, we've we've got you've got the GI Joe. I was we called Action Man. It was like the Palatoy version of G.I. Joe. Yeah. As, as the figures were the Kenner version, uh, the Ken, the Palatoy version of the Kenner figures. We had Action Men was the our version of the G.I. Joe. And yeah. if you get a if you if you've got a reproduction, what, a gun or a, a, a radio or anything like that, nobody nobody care. Yeah. But and, if, and you, if know you get funny? a reproduction gun blaster for for Han Solo. Yeah. You'd, you'd, be, you'd be thrown out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Star, I guess Star Wars is just a different world. But you know what's yeah. interesting to me? You bring that up. Um, and it doesn't make any sense because the other thing, too, is original G.I. Joe is getting more expensive than any other toy line, including oh, Star really? Wars. I was looking up because um, I wanted to buy a tunnel rat for my brother. Because yeah. tunnel rat was his favorite action figure as a kid. Right. I only found one carded figure on it's not on eBay. There's no carded first version tunnel rat on eBay at all. And wow. the only place I found it was at an auction and it went for $18,000. <laughs> and that's a common ordinary figure, you know, and, there, yeah. I, and I've only seen that one example of a carded version. And a lot of times, if you want to try to find a complete one, even loose, they're hundreds of dollars. Oh, and yeah. I started looking at other G.I. Joe figures, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, all these figures that I had as a kid, <laughs> most of them are over $100 or more. Oh, but, wow. but yet you can find complete Star Wars figures still for $20, you know? Oh, of course you can, yeah. So I'm like, yeah. G.I. Joe is just going bonkers, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I suppose, um, it's, I suppose they're a bit rarer than the Star Wars. Cause well, I know they're mass, they mass videos. I wonder if they yeah. broke. So many of them broke because the rubber bands yeah, yeah. and other things. I don't think it was, a, was. Was it as as popular as Star Wars? I don't think it was. Was it? I don't. I mean, when I was a kid, it seemed like it because all my friends. That was the three. They had, they had, uh, Star Wars, GI Joe, and usually had He Man, Masters of the He-Man. Universe. Yeah, yeah. And then some of us had Transformers if our parents were nice enough to because they were more expensive oh they're so, very expensive yeah so they were you had less transformers than anything else but but yeah i do remember like as a kid 
you know, my friends had hundreds of G.I. Joes and hundreds of tra- of Star Wars, you know, it's like all over. So, I mean, I feel like it was just the same amount, you know, in, in our circle of friends. They probably sold equally, you know, but I don't yeah. know. I don't know how they are in the world, you know. <clears throat> <laughs> no, they, um, I don't, we didn't have anything. Our, our, as I say, action man was 12. 12 inches yeah 12 inch dolls really uh we, we had action force that came out after um after star wars finished so, so those were but the that three, wasn't really popular the action force was the smaller ones yeah and action yeah. man was the taller okay yeah I'm, I'm really familiar with the action man because i watch a lot of analog toys all on, right um yeah he's great on on youtube there yeah, yeah. So I love looking at his and comparing it to the GI Joe stuff, but um, I didn't. I now if if you got did you get like Cobra Commander and stuff in the Action Force line, or because um, sometimes when I see Action no. Force, they're different characters, you know. Yeah, they they were more military. Yeah, I don't actually. I'm not actually really up on Action Force, and I should be really should be. But um, yeah, I will look into it and uh, get get back <laughs> in on that one because uh, yeah, I just I just think there was more army uh, army characters more than the like you know, yeah. different uh, built up characters. Um, especially Action Man was just all military. They did try and move away to the space, yeah, uh, spacemen and things like that later on, but uh, that didn't work out. The, Action Man is just remembered really for being a military figure, and I think the Action Forces as well. So what did what wait, what did you collect as a kid? What were yeah, you into? Seventy eight. We got some. We got Star Wars in nineteen seventy eight. Star Wars. Right? I remember going to see it in nineteen seventy eight February for my birthday when I was eight year old. Uh, the only thing we got at the beginning was the comics, the Marvel comics, but there was the UK Marvel comic, not the not the uh, US versions. Um, I can remember having soap. Yeah. <laughs> a C3PO soap. And I don't think I got actually got my first figure was Darth Vader. And I don't mm-hmm. actually think I got him till the end of nineteen seventy eight, to be honest with you. Um Yeah, I think that before before Star Wars it was Action Man. Yeah. Um Six Million Dollar Man. We did, we did get the Mego Star Trek figures, uh D C figures. Marvel figures, things like that. Yeah, that's some of the stuff that I wish I had. I don't have any of the old Mako, and I do wish I had them. When they when they re over here in the states, I don't know if you got them, but here in the states they re-released the Star Trek Mako recently, only in the last year or so. And I picked all those up just to have them, but I don't have the originals, and I really wish some of those superhero ones were awesome. I remember having Spock and my dog chewing his leg off. <laughs> <laughs> I had Robin and Spock for some reason. Um, yeah, we we got the Mego. Um, I had those and the Action Man and the Six Million Dollar Man. Batman was a big thing. Um, I don't know if you've seen the Corgi Batman Batmobile. Um, oh yes, I know that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I had about three of those because <laughs> get wear, wow. wearing them out. Um, <laughs> Thunderbirds was a big thing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a couple of Thunderbird toes. Anything that did anything, like the James Bond, Aston Martin, or Chitty yep. Chitty Bang Bang, anything that did anything, I like. <laughs> I, I, I I collected uh, TV and movie cars. Uh, I, was, I collected a lot of James Bond cars. Every time a new James cool. Bond film came out, I, I got the, the Corgi car. Uh, they also had little gadgets on them, so, especially the Lotus. Oh, I love that. I love that. Yeah, that was the one that went that had the submarine, right? Yeah, yeah, and the firing missiles, and I got the helicopter and everything. That's cool. Yeah, I remember that. So yeah, we're talking about repro. um, About customs, that's a big thing at the moment. The um, yeah, um, I I do like it when they make figures that are not. I like it when they make figures that are not available, yeah, you know, or never yeah, were yeah. available, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's Smith Lord that does the uh, Han Solo Stormtrooper. Yep. But they yep. started doing the uh, Blue Snaggletooth and the Yak Face. 
uh, yep. copies, which I don't, I don't agree with. Um, I mean, I've got a yak, yak first myself. I don't, I don't like it. It's just there See, what, it's a, it's... what gets me is that, like I said, I don't, I don't mind if they mark it some way that you're guaranteed to know it's a, it's a reproduction. Yeah. It's not the original. But what gets me about it is charging eighty or a hundred dollars for. It. Oh yeah. Because I'm like. I, I don't own a yak face, okay? But there's no way I'm going to give the guy $80 for a yak face yeah. that isn't real. Oh, no. You know what I mean? You might as well save up and get the proper one. Yeah, so I'm like, I'm like, he should be like 10 bucks, you know? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I, I don't know how much it costs him to make them, but that's my feeling. If you're going to make a reproduction that's not a real figure, you shouldn't be charging any more than like 10 bucks for no, it, no. you know? No, no. Yeah, but I mean, I, the, the molds my... the molds have probably cost them four grand or yeah. something like that. But so they're trying to get the money back out of it. Uh, I just yeah. don't understand why you would actually go. I mean, they, they do the the Luke Stormtrooper, and I, I saw an interview with him, and he, he said like four grand for the uh, for the mold for it. Why? Wow. Why would you do that? Why not? Why not wow. spend four grand on buying? 400 <laughs> stormtroopers look stormtroopers <laughs> and sell them i don't that's understand kinda... you'd make more money yeah, doing, that... doing it doing that way wow i didn't know i didn't know how much it cost them that's crazy it is yeah yeah uh, i'm gonna go on to Hasbro now uh, yeah what how do you feel about Hasbro? you know hasbro i I like what they do. I like I said I really like the black series. But I really wish they would take a note from uh Lego, okay? Cuz yeah. when you walk into a store, if you want a certain Lego set. Now, I know sometimes once in a while they might be sold out, but they're going to have it next week when you walk in. Gosh, yeah. They replenish those right away. Yeah. And you can almost get any Lego set you want anytime you want. And like I said, if you just happen to be in there on the bad day, you come in a week later and you're going to find the one you want. They'll replenish the stock. Yeah. Why can't Hasbro do that with their action figures? You know, you can't half the time you can't find the figures you're looking for even when they are current and in, in the, the latest release that's out it's like they put it's like they ship one case to the stores and then they never replenish the stock they don't they yeah. just stop and when the, the, and the ones that do put out nobody wants yeah exactly they'll stuff the aisles with gin or gin or so and you're like <laughs> wait a minute everyone's got her why <laughs> but yeah you can't find you know what are you looking for now like Doctor Afro, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> I think everybody is at the moment. I really want yeah. one of those Boba Fetts, the fortieth anniversary yeah, Boba yeah. Fetts, but I'm not going to get one of those. I mean, for the six, about sixty pound now on on eBay. Uh, yeah. But I, I was looking right today, the and they're, they're they're starting to be up around eighty dollars now. So. Yeah. Yeah, they will be. Because I was looking today just to see, because. Are they going to make, speaking of that, are they going to make more of, like, Empire Strikes Back 40th anniversary in that style of packaging? Or is he just a one-shot, like a one-off? I did I did mention to somebody um, when the 40th anniversary figs come out, I said, I bet they do with Boba Fett. Because they've done, they've done, what is it? they've done the first 12, and then they did the uh, R5-D4, and they looked pilot. So yeah, I wonder if they're going to do yeah. the first 20, obviously 21 with Boba Fett. Yeah. They may do the first 20. I, I don't know. I don't know. It's, I did I did foresee that the Boba Fett would come out because everybody everybody wants that. Yeah. Everybody wants Boba Fett. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, See, I, I would have thought they'd, they'd do the first 21 and maybe. Do a few more. See, I on. I never found I never found who was it. Um, there's still two or three that I never ever even saw of the of the first 40th anniversary for Star the first 12. Yeah. Know? So, because the the first series, the first six, they were everywhere and it flooded the market, you know. Yeah. And so they were easy to get, but then 
the second six, I think I only got three out of the six. I, I, I still need three of them. All right. Which ones are there? Um, I don't think I have a sand person. Was it the stormtrooper in yeah. there, right? Yeah. I don't. I don't think I have him. I mean, maybe it's Chewbacca. Right. Was he in the second set? Yeah. Yeah. He yeah. Right. To, yeah. Second set. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was those three because I know I found the Jawa, and I know I found the 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 Death Star guy. Yeah, those two seem to be uh, overpopulated. <laughs> seems yeah. to be lots of those. Um, you can find those anywhere. Fairly cheap. I got I got both of them for twenty pound on eBay. Yeah, I've got. To... Yeah, it was like it was like twenty or twenty five dollars that I ended up ended up finding those for. And... Yeah, I've got those two. In so the, it was normal. Three pure. I've only got four. But it's, it's the Boba Fett that one. Yeah, I would like to have them, yeah. but no. And I never got the the Luke either because the 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 um X wing pilot one because yeah he just got too expensive too fast. Oh so yeah, I just didn't bother. But my um, what's funny is that my mother, she really enjoyed doing this. But when they came out, she went around to the game. I think it was GameStop, and she found me the R five D four, and she said that it it was it was it was nice of her. She said it was a neat thing for her to do, because <laughs> when we were kids, that's what she used to do. She'd go <laughs> hunting around various stores oh, and find the action figure that we really wanted. So she said when I told her I wanted that R five D four, she was like, I went out and started looking and then she called me see, up and was like, I found it for see, that's you. Nostalgia you know? <laughs> for her as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It was nostalgia for her. Sounds like my She's mom. Back on the hunt <laughs> being being mom again, you know. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like my mom. She was uh, she visited me today and she says, Are you looking for polytype things? I went, Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so she she looked out for me as well. She looked looked for things for me as well. Well, like I say, um, I was having a discussion with you the other night once about uh, distribution in the UK. Um, yeah, it's worse over there, isn't it? Oh, you know? it's absolutely horrendous. Uh, yeah. With Toys R Us shutting down, there's yeah, there's Smith's Toys, there's Asda, which is a supermarket which was owned by Walmart. I don't know if they've sold it now. Um, so there's, there's Amazon and eBay. That's it. There are little yeah, toy, st- and, toy stores, but uh, they're not very and good. everyone jacks the price on eBay, so oh, it's yeah. hard. I mean, I went into Smith's Toys, which is like equivalent to Toys R Us last week or week before, and they had nothing Star Wars related. Nothing. It was wow. a wasted journey. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, distribution in this country is um, horrendous. I don't know what do it's... you do you rely on do you go to places like what is it end in demand or on demand toys or something what's that there's a couple of websites that I know that right are uh pretty good I use dark side toys okay yeah um, yep I know them yeah they've, they've been good to me before <laughs> uh, yeah well i've 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 ordered some uh I call them the repro repro collection but they're not the retro collection. <laughs> I've ordered a case of them. I don't like them. I don't want them. But I've ordered some. Uh-huh. I don't know why. See, I, I, have... I, I did like the retro collection. I do like those. Yeah. I, I, just because it takes me back to having something that when I was a kid, you know. But Yeah. Um, but I, I like that they're clearly, you know, even because they got the rough edges and all the clear markings that it's, you know, it's totally not original. And... Oh yeah, I got the big sticker on the front. Yeah, well, I don't like I... Is the distressed, distressed card though. Apparently, the card, the card is really flimsy. As it, well. it is kind of flimsy. Yeah. yeah, it's not. Yeah, and it does look distressed the way they designed it. But um, yeah, I, I, I mean, I don't. I think that's the part I don't like, but I do understand why they did it. You know, because it really makes it clearly distinguishable from the original oh, if course, you're seeing yeah. them on ebay you yeah, know yeah. and uh but the i opened up the stormtrooper and um had compared them to some of the old ones mm. and these i mean if you just glanced you probably wouldn't notice yeah but if you have them side by side with another one and 
really took took a couple seconds to, to check them out. You could clearly tell it's a different. It's it's not the same. It, the plastic's right. different. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't hold on to his gun. It always falls out. You know, like <laughs> I've heard that about the answer Han Solo as well. Yeah, yeah they, I think they all are that, that way. They won't they won't hold on to a weapon because their their hands are too big. Yeah. Well, the, then, the original uh, Han Solo was notable for the only one that actually kept his blaster in his hand. Yeah. So that's uh, that's a big mistake, and that's for that. Yeah, but I don't know if they expected people to open them. I'm not. I really don't. No, think they, they didn't. Did. I they think didn't they, they, they they here in the states they put them on the Father's Day display. All right. So I think they were totally aiming it. Hasbro was aiming it towards adults, yeah. adult collectors. They didn't. They didn't expect anyone to open these up, you know. Right. But they. Uh, but then again, they sent one or two cases to every every store, and that was it. <laughs> they were gone. How can, you know? how so can they not, not expect people to want to buy those? Yeah. yeah I, I mean, I know so many collectors. Like you were mentioned, Junkman yeah. before we. I think before we were recorded, and uh, I like Junkman. He's a great guy. He is, I think yeah. he does some pretty good videos. He, I found an extra Princess Leia. Actually, what I found was two Princess Leias at one of the, st- you know, one at one store and one at another. So I wrote him and I was like, did you get all the ones you wanted? Because I heard you on one of your videos saying how hard it was to find him. And he did. He happened to need Princess Leia. So I mailed right. him a Princess Leia. And then the other one I decided to do the giveaway for. So I, I had a giveaway yeah, recently yeah. to give it away. So because I because I knew there was so many people struggling when I saw them, I was like, I might as well buy them and then I can distribute them to people who need them. Yeah. Cause you know, and I don't, Sounds good. I'm, I kind of, I, I like to try to help out if I can, you know? <laughs> yeah. That's, that's about being a collector, isn't it? At the end of the day, uh, we help each other out. It's like, yeah, it's like when you go on these, um, uh, these groups and they shoot people down, the newbies down because they ask, ask silly questions, but, End of the day, you were a newbie at the beginning. You didn't know. You were asking yeah. questions. You got things wrong. You know what I mean? Yeah. As a collector, you get things wrong, obviously. So why, when somebody else comes into the hobby and needs to know things, just educate them. That's what, I, that, that, that's what this podcast is about, to educate new collectors, to bring new people into the hobby, not to shun them. Yeah. Because end of the day, there won't be, there won't be collectors left in 20 years' time. Definitely not as many. I know, no, yeah, because kids don't. Kids I don't, don't collect them. No, I don't think they do it as much as like we do. Yeah. No, no. But the other thing too is like, even being in it as long as I have, I still find myself learning a lot of things. Oh, of course. All the time, you know, like there's, there's always something new, or yep. or something changes. You know, I yep. thought, I thought I knew the story behind this character and how he came to be, but then someone finds a new. You know, the guy who worked on it comes out of retirement and says, oh, I'm going to talk about this now. And, yeah. You know, and, and you suddenly learn a little bit more about how that character came to be and what happened with it and stuff, you know. I don't oh, know. yeah. It's just, yeah. I mean, I don't know if you listen to the Vintage Rebellion podcast that comes out. Well, I haven't heard of them yet. I'll, I'll have to check them oh, out. They are absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Um, this month's podcast was seven hours long. <laughs> <laughs> but wow. it, it flies by because they I don't know how they find things to talk about all the time it, it's brilliant it's just there's so much to talk about in the vintage collecting it's, it's outstanding yeah. it really is so yeah I'd, I'd uh, recommend that to you and to everybody else the, the Vintage Rebellion podcast uh, I think they just come on check that out, yeah. come on Spotify, on Spotify as well yep okay so uh, yeah check yeah I, I listened to Talking Toys with um ted and oh, oh yeah i've remember. got that yeah yep 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 Just those guys are pretty me, good uh, podcast. <laughs> and uh who's it retro blasting i think is is on youtube i yeah, checked them out retro blasting. yeah i like yeah. i like him i think he's uh quite funny so yeah and like i said i like analog like toy for life and some of the things yep, do, toy I, don't, Poloi, I, don't, yep, I don't yep, i don't yep. totally agree with but um uh, some people like to clean things and yeah I'd, i like to keep them as they were originally i find with. it 
I, I've never refurbished anything myself, but I find it fascinating when I watch them do it, you know, like, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, that's definitely. how that, that's how that comes apart. Oh, that's yeah, how yeah. that works. <laughs> I, I, but I, I, yeah, I've never done any myself, you know? Yeah. You I, know? um, I bought a slave one vintage slave one a few weeks back. And there was something wrong with it. That I don't, the wings wouldn't work properly. So I had to watch the video of it getting stripped down. So I stripped mine down and sorted it all out. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so it is, it is interesting. It's, uh, it's something that needs needs to be out there, I suppose. Yeah, I'm just looking. Yeah. I'm just looking through my podcast. <laughs> I've got that <laughs> many different Star Wars podcasts. Talking toys is just a toy power podcast. ICC Star Wars. Have, have you heard of that one? No, no, no. Imper- not that one, Imperial no. Commentary, vintage. Yeah, that's really good. Um. Vintage Rebellion, Toy World Order, Sandcrawler. Yeah, I've checked out Sandcrawler. Yeah. And uh, Galaxy Toys. Yep, Galaxy Toys, of uh, course. Vintage Pod. Well, I knew those guys because I lived in Seattle and Galaxy Toys is from Seattle. All right. Yeah. Yeah, I was I was in their, uh, oh, I still am in their club. I still get their emails, but All right. I'm now I'm 3,000 miles away, so I can't go <laughs> to any of the events. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, you just said you, you moved from Seattle to Florida. Yeah, where, yeah. Where about I in lived Florida, in Seattle. I'm I'm near Miami. I'm I'm South oh, Florida, so I'm jealous. So yeah, I would we're going go back to the shopping. Um so what what is the what is it like shopping for Star Wars figures in America? It's kind of hit and miss. I mean, um when you're going to Target or Walmart, that's pretty much your only choices now that um uh, you know, all the big stores closed and Toys R Us closed. Yeah. You know, if you're going to do brick and mortar, that's pretty much your only choice is Walmart or Target now. And like I said, it's scarce at times, you know. Yeah. Certain series Hasbro will flood the market with, but then the next series you can't find at all. Do you think that's Hasbro Hasbro or the the stars or what? I think it's just the way Hasbro distributes. It could be a little bit in how target and walmart orders because yeah. i'll tell you with the vintage collection this is what i've heard you know that you know there's a modern you know the modern series called the vintage collection yeah. where they have highly articulated versions of the characters yeah. that are on the vintage style cards mm-hmm. um the way the compute the computer orders those at target and walmart right and it will only order the next batch if the figures that are on the shelf okay. have sold through so now that the aisle is full of snoke and ray ray uh, <laughs> you, it won't order the new ones that are oh, coming out for the new set. yeah it won't order them until all those snokes are sold so yeah i've been tempted at one or two stores to just be like all right screw it just so we can get the new figures in i'm gonna buy all these yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't want to do it. What am I going to do with 12 Snokes? <laughs> yeah, so, uh, it, it probably goes back to Hasbro then for, for what they're put, putting out. Yeah. Um, just re, I mean, a lot of the vintage collection just repackages out there of the earlier figures. Well, they're starting to put different ones out. Yeah, now. yeah. Yeah. But I say, like, we only saw that first series and I've never seen any of them, any other ones in the stores. I've had to buy them from online places like Entertainment Earth or like you said, Dark Side Toys. Yeah. Stuff like that, you know. Mm. I've used Jets Toy Hut. I use them. All right. I don't know if they I don't know if they sell overseas, but I know they do in the, in the States. But right. Jets Toy Hut is pretty cool. He's a good guy. He usually puts like a vintage style trading card in with your order. So you get a oh, surprise. Wow. wow. Every time you get something. So it's kind of a neat little surprise to oh. see what trading card you get you know <laughs> what do they call them sister what's that what 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 are they called jets toy hut or, or what do jets. you mean? as in yeah like like j-e-t-t j-e-t-t right well, well yeah. i'll have to look that up <laughs> yeah yeah I'll, it's just a nice little touch that he throws a trading card in yeah yeah every order and you see so you just kind of are like oh neat look at this thing you know yeah. that's cool you know that's what that's what customer service is all about. Yeah. You know what I mean, that's it's what gets, the, gets people coming back. 
It's just a little extra fun, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, have you got a Holy Grail? You know, um, I'm trying to think Star Wars related, something I really, really want, but there's not a whole lot that, you know what I think it would be? It would be like a really nice in the box, perfect 12 inch, um, yeah, yeah. the Boba Fett and yeah. the IG-88. The IG-88 is very soft. Do you them. remember though? you remember they made those giant size counter yeah. ones way back in the day? And the packaging, yeah, those would be really right. cool to have. The the because I love the bounty hunters. I have a lot of bounty hunter sets of all the different action figures and different. I even have the twelve inch. Remember Hasbro made those twelve inches from the nineties? Do you remember those? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I got all those of the of the bounty hunters. Oh really? So I've got a whole bounty hunter shelf that has the different. There's <laughs> it goes all the way from those twelve inch to the various three and three quarters they've had through the years. I've got all the black series and even the little Lego minifigures of them all. So, Oh, wow. It's like, a through the years of the bounty hunters, you know, and then nice. I would love to have an original, like Yoda maquette or whatever you call it. Those puppets, like things that they used in the movie, like, yeah, you know, That'd be so cool. <laughs> didn't it get didn't it get destroyed the, the original Empire? Shots I think by yeah, yeah. Um because they had to remake it for the Return of the Jedi, didn't they? And his eye his eye were all wonky. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> they could never get it right. I know they had one they have the only thing that supposedly exists from the original trilogy, from the original three movies, was the prototype puppet. And that um I know is in Gus Lopez's house in Seattle. And um so I've seen it. I've actually like looked at it before. All right. Um, I've never. Oh, wow. um, it'd be cool to have something like that. And he has Yoda's cane oh, also. Would. And uh, all right. In in a display case like thing. So that's the kind of stuff that I think is really cool. You know, I, I'd really like yeah, to have something like drops. Something unique like that, which is related to Yoda, would be cool. Something from the movie. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. But my all-time holy grail. I got to tell you one thing in all of toy collecting. One thing that I really, really want is, I don't know if you're going to know about this or what, but maybe some of the listeners will, but there was, in the 70s, there was a series called the Shogun Warriors, and they were these, like, tall, like, two-foot-tall robots and stuff, and they made a Godzilla. It rings a yeah, it rings a bell. They made a Godzilla yeah. in that set, and his fist shot off, and he had... Fire yeah, breath. definitely. I was going to say, did these fists shoot yep. off? Yeah, I have and one of those. I want that Godzilla so bad. I had him when I was a right. kid, and I, yeah. I grew up on a farm, and I remember he sank in the bog that was in the swampy part of the farm, and he <laughs> sank to his doom, and I've always wanted one ever since, And but there are hundreds of dollars, man. <laughs> I can't. I can't. Well, I'm it. going to a toy fair on Sunday, <laughs> so I'll look out for one for you. So all that I would appreciate I'll it, have, you know. I keep my eye open. <laughs> <laughs> and that goes without saying, man. I mean, if you're having trouble finding something in the in the UK that uh I can readily come across here in the States. Everything. I I mean what I could do is I'll make a pile and when it gets five or six figures, I'll put them in one box and ship them over, you know. I don't mind that'd doing be, that kind of brilliant. stuff. I really appreciate that. So like one last question for you. All right. In your collection now. If you could choose just one thing, what would it be? You know, I always liked my, um, I have a 12 back Darth Vader, the original Kenner. Wow. And if I, if I had to save one thing, if I was running out the door, that's the one thing I would save. And yeah. (laughs) Oh, as I said, I said earlier, that's my first ever figure. Yeah. And I would love that card again. Well, I'm keeping my eye out. it, It was a freak thing. I, um, um, I was still living in New York. I grew up on a farm, like I said, and uh, I grew up in New York on a farm in like the countryside of upstate New York. And yeah. when I was younger, when I had gotten back into collecting, and my friend, um, and my Italian friend there, and I were doing all that stuff, there was a neighbor who moved into a house up the street. She had just moved in, bought the place, and was going through cleaning everything up, and she was in the attic. And she found a wrapped Christmas present stuffed between the rafters in the attic. And she tore the top part of the Christmas wrap off and saw it was a Star Wars figure. 
And she asked wow. around and the neighbors told her, well, that guy down there on the farm, he collects those things. Go ask him. So she shows up and said, hi, I'm your new neighbor. And I found this in the <laughs> <rafters."> <laughs> And So at the time we looked it up, it was around a hundred dollars. And she was like, well, if you give me 40 bucks, I'll be happy. So I gave her $40 cash and took the thing. And now oh. I'm just like, oh my gosh. <laughs> Oh, uh, so, I bet she is as well. <laughs> yeah, it'd be a thousand dollars today, you know. <laughs> oh God, yeah, so, definitely twelve bucks. Yeah, but that was twenty-five, thirty years ago. You know what I mean? So. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but. Oh. So yeah, it's kind of neat. I, you know, not only just having it, but also having that little bit of a story to go with it. You know, it's kind of cool. Definitely. definitely. And I really like my. I have an Empire Strikes Back Stormtrooper in the packaging. You know on an empire strikes yeah. back card and the thing is mm, so perfect they're, they're, they're the best it's so mint and so perfect that oh. that's like my number two i love it just because of how perfect it is you know it's yeah it's absolutely flawless like it looks brand new and yeah. i love how beautiful it looks you know so thank you for that it's been lovely to talk to you today yeah, you too, Mark. It's been great. I like, I like, I love chatting toys and comics and games yeah. and stuff. So, you know, I'll have to have you and, on uh, again sometime soon. Yeah, yeah, that'd be cool. I'd like it. Find the Super Awesome Geek Show podcast. I'm on iTunes and Stitcher, and then I just started really trying to push the YouTube, showing off different action yeah. figures, and uh, that's pretty much what I do. <laughs> yeah, and I love, I love meeting new people. I love. Like I said, I, like we were talking about, you know, I kind of feel like collecting and being in this community is kind of like an all for one and one for all sort of, you know, like three musketeers kind of thing, you know, where we're all in this together. And if we just help each other out, we're going to make everyone a lot happier, exactly. even yourself, you know? Yep. You know? Oh, so yeah. It's kind of how I am, you know? That's why we podcast. We don't know. We don't do it for the money, do we? <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> we do it for the love of the uh, Star Wars figures. Yeah, exactly. All right, so again, thank you for that. Yeah, thank, chat. Yeah, thanks for thanks for having me on, Mark. I really appreciate no, no it. No problem. Been fun. Anytime. So there you go. There, I hope you uh, enjoyed that little chat. Uh, as I said, I don't want to call it an interview because I'm not interviewing the guy. We're just having a chat about Star Wars toys. And uh, if you want to come on and talk about Star Wars toys, about your collection, about anything in particular, just let me know. I do have a couple of people lined up for uh, maybe not next week or the week after. Maybe I'm going to do this once a month. It really depends on people's schedules and when they're available to record. So thank you for listening. And don't forget to put up a review on iTunes. Five star would be nice. And also go over to Patreon where I'm putting up articles. And there will be the rest of this interview. It's about another half an hour where we talk about Miami Dolphins. Uh, a bit more about shopping and about grading. But I think I'll be getting John back on sometime soon because he actually works for Lego, so we can talk about that next time. So until then, thank you for listening, and I will see you all next week. May the toys be with you. There's nothing a little music can't help. Rockin', rockin' now. Seagulls poke in my head, not fun. I said, Seagulls, mm, stop it now.